Hello friends, welcome to Limitless Life. I am your host, Larry Hutton, and I'm just so glad you're with me today. I always have so much fun, especially when I get to hear from you, the listeners, and you let me know what God's Word has done in your life and how it's changed your life. Man, if this is your first time watching, what we do is we share things on this program that are relevant to your everyday lives. What can you do to make your life better? What can you do to improve and enhance living a good life where you're happy, where you're content, where you're fulfilled, where you're full of peace and full of joy and, and you're blessed by God financially so that all your needs are met and you have plenty left over to be a blessing to other people. All those things we share in this broadcast because uh, with Jesus on your side, the limits are taken off. You, you just are limitless with God and with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I welcome you. Um, we have been actually doing a series on this program now, in case this is your first time joining us, a series that many would refer to as In Christ Realities. In other words, who you are in Christ, who you are when you're born again. And uh, so um, it's really cool that we get to learn about God and what He says about us and then uh, put it to practice in our lives and see it work. So that's what we're going to uh, get right back into. We've actually already spent a lot of weeks here. Uh, this is our ninth week, so we've been going just over two months now uh, on this series, and each one will stand alone because it's a different aspect of who God says you are in Christ what God says you have in Christ, what God says you can do in Christ. Let me real quickly uh, go over what we've been talking about, what God made you, uh, what God has given you, and what God has enabled you to do. Uh, so first of all, the, uh, the 19 things that we covered, who God says you are, God says you're an, an eternal being, a spirit being that is real. I mean, you're in God's image and likeness, you're created in God's class. Uh, so you're not, you know, some ghost or something. You're an eternal spirit being. So when you put off this body, you'll get a glorified body that will never pass away and won't have any hurt or pain as well. So uh, you are an eternal spirit being, a God being created in God's class. Number two, you're a son of God, a daughter of God, a child of God, a part of God's immediate family. We're talking to those that have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, of course. Number three, you're a servant of God. We're sons positionally, uh, our place with God, but we are servants servants of God. Thank God we serve the Lord Jesus Christ to others. And then number four, we're friends of God. God laid down his life for his friends and that's you and me and all those that have received him. Actually, it's the world because God so loved the world that he gave Jesus. And then number five, you're an heir of God, that everything belongs to God belongs to you. Number six, you are the righteous, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Number seven, you are the chosen of God, handpicked, hand selected by God. Uh, number eight, you are God's representative. Wow, you're, so I said you're heir, right? Number five, number six, you are righteous, you're right with God. Then number seven, you're chosen. Number eight, you're representative an ambassador of his government. I want to make sure I don't pass any, miss, skip any of them. Uh, number nine, you are anointed. God has anointed you. Number 10, you are a love being just like your father God. Number 11, you are redeemed. You're the redeemed of the Lord. Uh, that includes redemption from every curse as the result of sin, including redemption from sin itself. Number 12, you are royalty. Number 13, you are holy. Number 14, you are purchased, protected in God's possession. Number 15, you are the temple of God. Number 16, you are the light of the world. Number 17, you are the salt of the earth. Number 18, you are an overcomer. You are more than a conqueror. Number 19, you are physically whole and healed in your body. All of these things have to be applied and appropriated by faith. So if you hear me say something and you think, wow, that's, that's not something that I am, but God says I am, so you've got to hook your faith up with that and start seeing it to come to pass in your life. So you are healed, praise God. And, uh, and then we talked about some things that, that we have that God has already given us. And uh, so here's the, what did we have, 20 things, I think, 20 things that we covered that you have God 
Almighty, the Creator living inside you. Number two, you have the same anointing in you that Jesus had in Him. Number three, you have God's Zoe, His very life in you. That's His very essence, uh, eternal life. You don't have to wait till you die and get to heaven. Uh, number four, or number five, you have God's love in you. No, number four is you have God on your side. He is for you. Oh, I love that one. God's for me, not against me. Number five, you have God's love in you. God, you have, or you have God loving you, however you want to say it, but you do have God loving you, you have God in you, and you have God loving through you, kind of multifaceted there. Uh, number six, you have the Holy Spirit helping you. Number seven, uh, you have supernatural weapons and armor. Number eight, you already have everything you need to live an abundant life. And by the way, if you haven't been watching these, every single one of these points, we took numerous scriptures and just laid a solid foundation so it could be part of your doctrine, doctrine that puts you over in life. We're not talking a religion. We're talking a relationship with a risen Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, so you already have everything you need to live an abundant life. Number nine, you have all of heaven's authority and God's power to back it up. Number 10, you have all of God's fruit in you. Boy, that's a, that's a multi-detailed one there, multifaceted one. Number 11, you have the name. Number 12, you have the word. Number 13, you have the blood. Whoa, those three things are powerful. Number 14, you have full access into the throne of God, into God's presence, the throne of grace, anytime, anywhere, for anything. I love that. And then you have freedom and liberty in your life. So anything that's bondage, uh, holding you back, holding you down, trying to crush you in life, you have freedom and liberty from those things. Number 16, you have angels that are your servants. I'm talking all powerful, almighty, created beings by God. Angels that are your servants. They're here to serve you and work for you. Uh, number 17, you have a bright and clear path to follow, a wonderful future ahead of you if you start walking with God the way He wants you to. Number 18, you have your name preceding you in heaven. It's already up there. It's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You have your name written in heaven. Number 19, you have God's righteousness in you. And number 20, you have God's health in you. So we talked about all those things. And then we started last program talking about what God says you can do. So who does God say you are? What does God say you have? And now what does God say you can do based on who you are? in Christ, in Jesus, and what God's already given you because you're in Jesus. Now, what can you do? Well, the first thing we talked about already is you can keep your life from falling apart. In fact, you can get up when you fall. And that was kind of what we were talking about last time. It's really a two-part. I'm going to get into the second part this time. But remember Proverbs 24, 16, we quoted, the just may fall seven times, but you can rise up again. So you can get up when you fall down. You get knocked down by the devil, uh, the things of life going on, you can get up when you fall. In fact, we ended up uh, quoting the contemporary English version. Let me read that to you again. This is 2 Corinthians 4, 8, and 9. Uh, contemporary English version. We often suffer. Remember we were talking about Paul and all the tests and trials he went through, and yet he'd just get back up if he got knocked down. He said this to the Corinthian church, we often suffer, but we are not crushed. Even when we don't know what to do, we don't give up. In times of trouble, God is with us. And when we are knocked down, we get up again. Uh, listen, Paul fell into a lot of tough times, a lot of tough circumstances, but you know, he really never fell because he never fell apart emotionally. He never wanted to give up. He never wanted to quit. He always stood strong through every test and through every trial. And that's what we're seeing we can do. We can always get up when we fall. But let's go to part two of this uh, point, And that is Peter had some startling re revelation along this line uh, we're going to look at over in Peter. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 1. Uh, it says, Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have ob obtained like precious faith, so that's us, uh, through the righteousness of God in our Savior Jesus Christ. Verse 2, grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Uh, verse 3, according as God's divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that has called us to glory and virtue. And we discussed that in earlier programs. Uh, verse 4, whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises 
that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacks these things is blind, cannot see very far off, and, and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. So this is talking to believers here. Wherefore, verse 10, I want you to see this verse. 2 Peter 1.10, Wherefore the rather brethren, that's talking to sisters and brothers in the Lord, Wherefore, brethren, give diligence, or in other words, be diligent to make your calling and election sure, for if you do these things, you shall never fall. So is, is there a way to keep from falling? You know, the Bible says, if the just fall seven times, they'll rise up again. Well, that's wonderful if we fall. Bless God, we're going to get up again. But what if there was a way to keep from falling? Wouldn't you rather live like that? Well, according to these verses, there is a way to keep from falling. God, through the apostle Peter right here, tells us, 2 Peter 1.10, if you do these things, you shall never fall. If you do what things? Verses 5 through 7. Add to your faith. Add to your faith. And then it mentions seven things. Virtue, knowledge, self-control, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness, and love. For, verse 8, if, you, if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you'll not be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, knowing truth is what makes you free. You're not going to be barren or un unfruitful in the knowledge. It says you won't be barren. You won't be unfruitful in your knowledge. So remember, Peter's the one that told us in 2 Peter 1, 3, God's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him. So adding these seven things to our faith, or in other words, applying these seven qualities or characteristics, if you will, to our lives, it will cause us to never go without in any area. Hmm. So let's just take a look for a minute at these seven things. Notice the seven things that it talks about that we're supposed to add to our lives or, or to our faith. It says, first of all, virtue. Virtue is a Greek word that means moral excellence, moral excellence. You know, as Christians, we ought to have high morals. Our standards of morality ought to be high. You know, you can always tell uh, people that um, are not Christians. Well, some of them may have been raised in Christians' homes, so they do have high morals. But, but again, it's based on the way they were raised. But people that are not raised with good morals, you, you can sure tell they don't know Jesus. Now, unfortunately, there's a lot of Christians that don't have good morals because they haven't learned to add to their faith this, this thing, this moral excellence, this virtue that God speaks of here in this verse. So we're supposed to be morally pure, morally good. I mean, a godly character. We know right from wrong. You know, that's, that's the thing about moral excellence is you know there is right and there is wrong. Nowadays, in today's society, they want to just merge everything. Well, there's no right, there's no wrong. You know, you can't tell people they can't live this way or be this way or do this or have this. And, then you, and, and so there's no division with a lot of people's lives. Well, what's right, what's wrong? That's why Jesus said in John 17, 17, thy word is truth. So again, we are supposed to live morally good lives, sexually pure, um, financially pure. We're supposed to be men and women of integrity. When we give people our word, we're not liars. So many things about this moral excellence that we could go into. But this is a virtue. This is virtue uh, or moral excellence that we need to add to our faith. And then the next thing that's mentioned is knowledge. Knowledge, this is actually in the Greek, it speaks of a knowledge that can't be shaken you know, an absolute assurance. 
It's the way uh, Abraham became as he walked with God and, and continued to seek God. The Bible said he was fully persuaded that what God had promised, God was able to perform. He got fully persuaded. So this kind of knowledge is when you and I, we stay in the word until we know it. We stay and we walk with God until, okay, you know what? I'm not going to be shaken here. That's the kind of knowledge you're supposed to add to your faith. And then uh, the next thing, thing that's mentioned is temperance. Temperance. Well, if you've looked at other translations, you may, you may see some of them say self-control, which is what it means. This it, Greek word means self-control, especially continence. Uh, this word also speaks of being strong in a thing or masterful. So the, 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 the word temperance here is self-control, especially continence. Uh, the word speaks of being strong or in a thing or, or masterful. Now, when it speaks of continence, in case you don't understand that, that's talking about, uh, if you look up that word, it means self-restraint. It means uh, abstinence, uh, especially with regards to sexual activity. So when it uses this word continence, we can have... Uh, self-control in every area of our lives, even sexual purity. And so that's important because we talked about uh, that when we were, uh, when we found out we're redeemed from sin and, and God says, don't yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin. Talked about that in another program. But God tells us one thing that we can add to our faith is temperance or self-control, which includes self-control over the body, over the emotions, over the, uh, your finances, everything that it, that it mentions. Then it goes on. The next thing that mentioned to add to our faith is patience, which actually in the Greek, it means cheerful endurance. I, I like people to get an understanding of this word patience because it's actually this Greek word is used throughout the New Testament. And a lot of times people think when they see or read, you know, be patient and so forth and so on, they're thinking, oh, well, that means I just got to wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. And if nothing happens, I just got to keep waiting. Actually, no, this, this word patience is, it's a constancy. It's a cheerful endurance. It, it refers to someone who has fortitude, someone who perseveres. So that's what this Greek word's talking about. So it's not just sitting around, okay, you know, I've got to, through faith and patience, I'll inherit the promises. No, that's not what it's talking about. Through faith and cheerful endurance and being constant and having a, 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 a God fortitude and one, you're going to persevere. I'm, I, okay, I might be waiting, but bless God, I'm not just waiting, sitting around waiting. I'm blessed God. I'm persevering with my faith. I'm pressing. I'm not letting go. You know, that's what I'm doing. So that's, that's the kind of patience it's talking about to add to your faith. And then... Uh, the next thing mentioned is godliness. God wants us to be holy. Actually, this, the Greek word here speaks of holiness. It speaks of someone who is totally sold out to God, uh, living the way Jesus lived. And I think that's important because I've mentioned on di different programs, in case you haven't heard me, that being holy isn't being religious. Oh, you know, holier than thou, you know, what thinkest thou of this is situationist? You know, I mean, no, you don't talk Elizabeth in English to be holy and uh, you don't put on some robe and turn your collar around or whatever. No, you just act like Jesus. Jesus was real to the people. Whether it was the Pharisees, he was real to them, or whether it was sinners, he was real to them. What you see is what you get. That's one thing that my wife and I have endeavored to do all of our lives since we've gotten married and since we've been in the ministry is... What I preach in the pulpit, I live in my life. What I live in my life is what I preach in the pulpit. Uh, I'm the same. I'm, listen, Jesus was the same yesterday, today, and forever. We're in him. He's in us. Uh, as he is, so are we in this world. We're supposed to be the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so we're adding to our faith these things. So add godliness. Add holiness. Didn't, God, didn't we already find out God made us holy? That you are holy? Well, yeah. So add this to your faith and it'll, uh, it'll produce rich dividends. And then the next thing mentioned is brotherly kindness. Brotherly kindness is the Greek word Philadelphia. Uh, it speaks of a fraternal affection, uh, love of the brethren. Um, 
I, I compare that when I think of fraternities, uh, firemen. Boy, they have a fraternity. Boy, they stick together. Boy, one fire, it, it may be from a different state or a different uh, location in, a, in the same city they're in, but boy, they stick together, man. Hey, we're sticking together. We're part of this, this team. We're, we're fraternal brothers, you know. And then I think of military men when I, when I see different people from different uh, divisions of uh, the military, man, they stick together. Oh man, you're part of this division. Oh, well, so was I. And, and, and even if it's different divisions, they stick together. And people like the special, uh, uh, like the Navy SEALs, different ones of the different military. Um, boy, I'll tell you, they stick together, man. They, they have this fraternity. They have, in other words, they have one another's backs. And that is what is talked about with this Greek word Philadelphia. You and I, we got to have each other's backs. When we see another brother, in fact, I'm just going to stick on this one for a minute. When we see another brother or another sister that's hurting or maybe fallen into sin, we're supposed to have their backs. The Bible says, you which are spiritual, restore them. How many times do I see Christians and hear Christians bad mouthing other Christians because they missed it? I can't believe they did that sin and I can't believe they, that's like the story in the Bible when, when Jesus turned to the Pharisees, they were condemning the woman that fell in sin and said, um, you that are without sin, cast the first stone. Not one of them, a bunch of them there, not one of them cast a stone. Huh? Cause they knew they were all under the law and the law said, if you're guilty with just one, Guilty with one, all of the laws that there were, there weren't just 10, there were hundreds. I mean, all the laws you got to keep, if you're guilty with just one point, you're guilty of them all. So you're just as guilty as this woman here that you're condemning. So friends, we don't need to be condemning. We need to add brotherly kindness. We need to make sure that all people uh, are going to receive us as lovers because we love God. God loves us. God's in us. His love is in us. He put his love. He loves us and he's loving through us. Hallelujah. And then the last thing that's mentioned, we'll go on just so we can get through this. We could stay there all day, but don't bad mouth other Christians. I don't care if it's a husband, a wife that's done you wrong. I don't care if it's it's people, preachers on TV that fall into sin. Come on, they're part of the same body of Christ. If they're born again, They've accepted Jesus as Lord and even if they haven't, bless God, God so loved the world that he gave Jesus. So God loves the world. Why can't we? We can because we're God beings. God created us in his image and likeness. He made us love beings, right? And then, come on, he told us to love others the way he loves us so we can do that. Hallelujah. So uh, this is how we should be towards all people who are part of the body of Christ, who are part of the world. Listen, the Bible says Christ died for the ungodly. So guess what? Jesus is loving them. The only difference between a sinner or between that terrible person that did you wrong that you're wanting to hold something against, the only difference between them and us is Jesus. And Jesus Christ died for the ungodly. Maybe they acted ungodly or maybe they really are a sinner and ungodly, but Christ died for them. So there's still hope for them, praise God. All right, the last thing that's mentioned then is charity. If you look up this Greek word, it's agape. And that's what God is. Uh, this is the deepest and most powerful love in existence because we are talking God himself. And this love, you know, remember what he told the Corinthians, it never fails. So God said, if these things be in you, remember we're in verse eight here still. If these things be in you, wow, if these things be in you and abound, so you're not just holding them back, you're actually letting these things uh, shine in your life. They make you, verse 8 says, that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wow, so I'm not going to be barren of his knowledge, not going to be unfruitful in his knowledge. So that means the knowledge is going to be causing me to produce fruit, right? And that means all things that pertain to life and godliness. Remember earlier in the verses. So, but God said in verse 10, I love this, wherefore the rather brethren give diligence, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. In other words, your walk with God and you're going to do what God's called you to do and, and follow his, his voice and his ways for your life. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. Hmm. If you do these things, 
Wow. So virtue, knowledge, self-control, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness, and love. If you do these things, you'll never fall. So I, I like Proverbs that says, man, if you fall down, bless God, get up again. If you fall down seven times, get up again. You're not going to quit. But I like it even better. Hey, uh, you know, I think I'll add virtue and this moral excellence and this knowledge and this self-control and this cheerful endurance and constancy, you know, a, a godly fortitude. I'm going to persevere in this holiness, godliness, and this, this Philadelphia fraternal affection. You know, bless God, I'm going to stick with my brothers. I'm going to have their back. And then finally, this agape love, I'm going to stick. I'm going to do this. God said, I'll never fall if I do these things. I like that even better than falling and having to get up again. Amen. And I've noticed in my own life, the more I do this, the less I fall and the less I have to get up. Praise God. None of us have arrived, but bless God, let's keep pressing toward the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Well, <laughs> while we are out of time, we, we just finished covering one, number one of God, what God says you can do, what he's enabled you to do. So we'll get to number two in the next program. Thank you for joining us. I trust these are being a blessing to you. Uh, if, if they are, would you please email us? Please contact us. Uh, go to our website, LarryHutton.org. Email us, uh, whatever. Just get in contact with Facebook me, you know, YouTube me, whatever. Let, let me know that, that they're being a blessing to you. And thank you partners for helping us get this word out because you are. And if you're not a partner and you think you'd like to help others hear this good news, man, partner up with us because we'll be your partner as long as you, as well as you being our partner. We love you. We're out of time. Have a blessed day and know that Jesus loves you and so do we. God bless. Do you know yourself? Not the person the world says you are, but the saved Holy Spirit empowered believer that you really are in God's eyes. At times we all struggle with our identity, ability, and purpose in life, but God's Word is full of His descriptions of who we really are in Him. Listen to Dr. Hutton quote the Bible scriptures on who you are, what you have, and what you can do in Him. Build and strengthen the very foundations of your faith, enabling you to believe and therefore speak all that God has created you to be, to have, and to do. To order in Him scriptures, go to LarryHutton.org or call 888-887-WORD. Join us again for Limitless Life with Dr. Larry Hutton, where you'll get practical teaching from God's Word that you can apply to your everyday life. Go to LarryHutton.org to watch this program and many others. You'll find special offers and resources to help you thrive in life. You can check on Larry and Liz's schedule and join them at a meeting near you. That's LarryHutton.org, or you can call 888-887-WORD.